Hello everyone, welcome back. In this video, we will be discussing about the third and the fourth problem of today's weekly contest. Find the count of monotonic pairs 2 and find the count of monotonic pair 1. Both the problems are exactly equal. The only difference lies in the constraint. The constraint for the second problem is, uh, th third problem is uh, on the smaller side and uh, the constraint for the last problem is a bit higher. So we'll be starting from the very brute force solution and optimizing it step by step. If you haven't given this problem a try, you should pause and at least give it a shot because you have solved these kind of problems multiple times in this channel. So with that, let's get started. The problem states that you are given an array of positive integers nums of length n. We call a pair of non-negative integer array, array 1, array 2, monotonic if their lengths are both n. Array 1 is monotonically non-decreasing, Array 2 is monotonically non-increasing and Array 1 of i plus Array 2 of i should be equal to nums of i for all the i's. Your job is to count the monotonic pairs and since the answer can be large, you have to return it modulus 10 power n plus 7. So let's take an example, let's say nums is 2, 3, 2. You need to find out how many monotonic pairs exist for this particular array. So there are four possible monotonic pairs as shown here. Each of those pairs satisfy all the criteria and there is no other pair which can satisfy all the criteria and hence there are and hence the answer is four because there are just four of these. So let's see the first one. Here it satisfies the first criteria because the first criteria says that array 1 should be monotonically non-decreasing. In other words, the array should be increasing. So you can see the array is indeed increasing. Similarly, second criteria says that array 2 is monotonically non-increasing. In other words, it should be decreasing array. So here you can see it is actually a decreasing array. Finally, array 1 plus i, array 1 of i plus array 2 of i should be equal to nums of i. You can see 0 plus 2 is equal to 2. 1 plus 2 is equal to 3 and 1 plus 1 is equal to 2. So because it satisfies all the criteria, this is a valid pair and there are 4 of those. So answer here is 4. So hope the problem statement is clear. Now what's the very brute manner to solve this? The very brute force way would be, okay, I will try out every possible pair of arrays. For each pair, I will see whether it satisfies the given criteria or not. If it satisfies the criteria, I will count that in my answer, otherwise I will not. So if you try that out yourself, basically you are trying to enumerate all possible pair of array. And then after enumerating all of those, you are checking the condition. So checking the condition you can do in order in time, right? You can simply iterate over the entire array and check all these conditions. Now the thing is how to enumerate all possible pairs. So how many first, how many different ways are there to get the first array? What would be the value here? The value here would be anything between 0 and 2. Similarly, value here would be anything between 0 and 4. Value here could be anything between 0 and 7 and so on and so forth. So let's assume that all of these values are x for now. So for each element, you can have anything between zero and X, right? So you have total X choices to fill each of these boxes and there are N of these boxes. So overall you will have X power N different ways to fill all the boxes. So you have X power N different first array and similarly you will have X power N different secondary. And for each pair, if you try out, you will take order in time. So overall complexity is x power 2n multiplied by n, which surely will not pass because the value of x itself is very huge. It is 2000 in both the problem, second and third. So this will not pass and we need to come up with something better. Now, obviously the biggest part here is x power 2n, which means you can't even iterate over all possible pairs and without iterating you need to figure out the answer and the usual way there is you try to come up with a recursive solution memoize it and that's how you can reduce your state 
so we'll not go deep into that part let's try to come back here so let's focus on the first element right what will be the value of the first element the value of that element should be less than equals uh, greater than equals to the previous element so basically this value should be greater than equals to whatever existed before similarly value here would be less than equals to whatever existed before so because it is the very first element there is nothing before so you can assume that it is zero similarly this is the very first element so there is nothing before you can assume that it is infinity now y is zero because the array is anyways positive so you, you can assume minus infinity as well but because the array is positive zero is sufficient now what are the values that you can fill here you can fill either zero or one or two because all of them satisfy this particular inequality similarly what are the values you can fill here again you can fill either zero or one or two because all of those satisfy this particular inequality now let's assume that you fill one of those let's say you fill one here and you fill two here uh you fill one here now because you filled one here you are bound to fill one here because array one of zero plus array two of zero should be equal to nums of zero as per the third criteria right so because this condition needs to be satisfied if the value is one here it should also be one now what you are saying you are saying that okay now my entire problem is reduced to give me the number of ways in which i can fill this entire remaining array given that the first element should be greater than equals to one in the first array and the first element should be less than equals to one in the second array isn't this problem exactly equal to the original problem you solved the original problem was okay there are i need to find out how many ways are there to fill this remaining like all these boxes such that the value of first element should be greater than equals to zero and the value of the first element in second array should be less than equals to infinity and now you are saying that okay i have fixed one of those value let's say 0 2 or 1 1 or anything and i'm saying that okay give me the number of ways to fill the remaining element such that the value of the first element in the first array should be greater than equals to 0 value of the second first element in the second array should be less than equals to 2 so hope you can see the regression here let's uh, try to formalize this a bit we let's say you are filling this particular array right so what you are saying is okay i need to fill all these four boxes so the current boxes lies here i need to fill all these four boxes and it is given that i have some element here let's call it p1 and some element here let's call it p2 so i need to find out how many ways are there in which i can fill this remaining array with these two constraints and what are the possible ways to fill the first element again for the first element you have only 0 to 7 you can fill anything between 0 to 7 so you can try with something that is greater than equals to the previous element so you can start with p1 right and if you pick p1 here the next element should definitely be 7 minus p1 again assuming that this is greater than this is less than equals to p2 this is a valid choice so now you are saying that okay i filled some x here and 7 minus x here now tell me what are the number of ways to fill the rest of the element such that the previous element or the first element should be greater than equals to x in the first array and first element should be less than equals to 7 minus x in the second array so you can call the exact same function for calculating this value now what are the other choices other choices are okay i fill something else i fill p1 plus 1 here assume so in that case you will fill 7 minus p1 minus 1 or in other words 6 minus p1 right now you are saying and again assuming that 6 minus p1 satisfies this p2 criteria as well you are saying that okay given i fill p1 plus 1 in the first 
first element i want number of ways to fill the remaining places such that the first element should be greater than equals to the p1 plus 1 and second element should be less than equals to 6 minus p1 so you can get the same the thing from the exact same function right and similarly you can try out all other possibilities of uh, the first element here and second element you will get similar kind of problems you can call the you can keep calling same function with the reduced array so previously you had this 759 now you will call the same function with 59 and whatever is exist before after that so if you do this let's say you got x1 as a result of this f you get x2 as a result of this f you get x3 as a result of this f and you get x4 as a result of this x and so on and so forth so the final answer for this f would simply be the sum of all these xi's and that you will return as an answer for this particular function so hope you can visualize the equation a bit better now now how to actually write the pseudo code so you do you need to keep the entire array with you the answer is no because you know that at any given point of time you are only dealing with a suffix of the original array so because you are dealing with suffix of the original array it's enough to just maintain what is the index after which you are considering all the array so you basically you will start with index 3 here right because you are saying that everything i need, I need to fill everything after index 3 and when you are calling something for the below elements you will pass on index 4 because now there you are saying that i need to fill everything after index 4 similarly for this one you will call index 4 for this one you will call index 4 and for this one you will call index 4 as well so basically instead of keeping for like forwarding the entire state into the function you are simply maintaining an integer to reduce your space and what to maintain so how would the pseudo code look like the pseudo code for this would look something like this uh, what you are doing is you are maintaining three things the index which denotes that okay after which index i need to fill all the positions previous one which says that what should be the value like what should be the minimum value of the first element of the first array previous two which denotes that what's the maximum value for the first element of the second array and inside this you will do very straightforward things like uh, if you have exhausted the entire array in other words if you have filled everything and you are asking that okay how many ways are there to fill this part of the array there is just one way which is basically nothing you whatever you have filled is correct so you just simply return one in this scenario otherwise we will come to this memorization part a bit later but uh, otherwise what you will do you will try out every possible way to fill this particular value and this particular value once you have filled these two value you will call the same function for filling the remaining part of the array based on what you have filled here so we will start with prev1 and go all the way up to array index because the minimum value here could be prev1 now based on i1 you can easily figure out what i2 would be because i2 would simply be array index minus i1 now after that you can simply figure out whether this satisfy the condition or not if it doesn't you will continue to the next element otherwise you know that you found a valid pair of integers that satisfy these two criteria so i1 and i2 you will call the function saying that okay give me the number of ways in which the first element should be greater than equals to i2 in the first array and less than equals to i2 in the second array so that you can call the same function for and get the answer you will simply keep them summing up and finally return that as your answer now it may happen that you are computing the same state again and again and in those scenario if you simply memorize it you will avoid computing those things again and again right so you can simply check if this is something you have previously computed if it is you will return whatever you have computed because after every computation you are saving that as well so what is the overall time complexity of this entire approach 
the time of the day is number of states multiplied by what you are doing inside each of the state because each state will be computed exactly once because of memorization so first let's figure out what you are doing inside each of the state so you are doing some mathematical operation here so that's order one then you are doing a for loop here right which basically is iterating from previous one to array index which in other words you can say it can take order x time x is the maximum value of the element so you are doing order x operation inside each of the state now how many states are there number of states is equals to number of different ways to call this function so number of different values of index could be n anything between 0 and n number of distinct values of pre1 could be x because you can fill anything in the previous value similarly number of previous value number of different values of pre2 will also be x so overall the number of different state here is n x square so overall complexity of your approach is n x cube which will not pass again both the second third and the fourth problem because the value of x um value of x is 50 and the value of n is 2000 so it is 2000 and it will be 50 cube so that is not sufficient but 50 square is sufficient so if we can somehow reduce one of the x from here that could be sufficient there as well now what's the easiest thing that you can remove which of the x you can remove easily the answer is you can remove either this x or one of these x right so if you remove this x what does it mean it means that you are not trying out all possibilities for the current index so removing this x could be harder can you remove one of these x again if you remove one of these x it means that you are now changing what you are carrying forward so that could also be harder but if something can be derived from the other then it could be easier the state logically would remain same but uh, uh, while computing the distinct states it would reduce so i would strongly encourage you to pause and try to see if you can remove one of these pref1 and pref2 by yourself so hope you thought about it the answer is you can derive pref1 from pref2 and vice versa why because let's say you pick i1 here right and you are saying that okay I, I need to find out number of ways in which i can fill this entire remaining array such that the first element should be greater than or equal to i1 and in the first array and first element in the second array should be less than or equal to i2 now do you really need both i1 and i2 the answer is no because if you have i1 you know that i2 would simply be whatever was the value here minus i1 because if you are able to put i1 and i2 here it indirectly mean that you are able to satisfy all the criteria, which in turn will say that you are satisfied this criteria as well which basically says that if it is i1 it would be 7 minus i1 or whatever the value here is so in other words you don't really need i2 you can simply drop i2 and you can still be able to achieve this exact same thing because the i2 is something you can compute with help of i1 itself so you don't need to pass i2 separately and hence this i2 will not be part of your dp state as well so number of states will reduced but the entire thing will still remain same because priv2 is something you can compute directly here so the pseudo code for this would look something like this instead of maintaining priv2 as an explicit state you are saying that okay i can derive priv2 based on priv1 itself so i don't really need to pass in preview priv2 explicitly so the entire solution will still remain the same except you now have n multiplied by x different states and inside each of the state you are doing you are still doing order x operation so overall complexity is now reduced to order n x square which is sufficient to pass the second th pass the third problem at least because third problem says that value of n is uh, 2000 and value of x is 50 so nx square is sufficient for this problem 
so if this was difficult for you encourage you to pause and try to code this entire thing by yourself before moving forward because that would give you a much better clarity of what the approach is and how you reached this now this is not sufficient for the fourth problem though because the value of x here is 1000 so you can't afford 1000 square multiplied by 2000 here so you need to reduce one of these x as well now notice that you have two x here one from what is the previous value and second you are trying out something for each of the indexes and uh, each of the valid choices for the current index now removing uh, either of them is now harder because if you can again derive from derive this value from some other value then it would be easier you are not changing state but if you can't derive this and you want to remove this it would mean that you are not carrying forward anything which is difficult right similarly for this one if you remove this you are saying that i want to not iterate over every possible indexes but still i want to somehow figure out what's the contribution of them so that is also difficult so whenever you get to this point there are two different approaches either you convert this to bottom up and if you convert this to bottom up you might be able to reduce some for loop inside this because in bottom up you can apply range query data structures if possible or you try to think of some other state or some other solution completely by doing some observation so observation part is always a bit tricky so just think of if there is a range if there is something related to range here and if it is then this path is your best bet because you can simply convert this entire thing to a bottom-up solution very easily and then you can apply that range query data structures to reduce this loop so in this scenario we can see that it's actually happening it's actually performing this in some sort of range which range it is i would encourage you to pause and think about it for a moment so first let's try to convert this entire thing to a bottom up solution so this was our solution converting our top down to bottom up we have discussed multiple times the easiest way is figure out which part you have uh, answered first in the bottom in the top down solution and start from there in the bottom up so in this scenario we know that index equals to n is something we already know the answer for and this will be the very first thing that you will have the answer for so in other words you are saying that you will have the answer for index equals to n and then only you will be able to compute n minus 1 and then only you will be able to compute n minus 2 and so on and so forth so in this scenario we will start from n minus 1 and go all the way up to 0 and for each of the index i will try to find out what's the value for each of the previous one as well and once you have figured out these two loop rest is simply copy paste whatever you are doing inside each of the state simply take that entire thing and paste it here and everything should work as is because you are not changing the way you compute the state rather you just uh, figured out which state is dependent on what and computed the required state before the before actually deriving the final state so in this scenario you figured out that okay index plus one is necessary so you computed all the indexes before and then like you are now going from n minus one to the zero so that you compute index plus one always before index so in this scenario you were calling f of index plus one comma i1 in this scenario you will simply call dp of index plus one comma i1 that's it so now you have converted this entire thing to a bottom-up solution now can you think of like can you reduce this loop into something like okay for i1 in l2r i will not do anything of this i will simply do answer plus equals something if you can convert this into this you can use some range query data structure so that's your final target that if you can convert this into some sort of range query which is ranging over a continuous range you can optimize this 
So the answer here is yes. You can simply convert this entire thing to a L two R kind of fashion. Why? Because if you think about it, we will like how this loop will proceed. Basically, this will this condition will skip some elements, and after that, all the element will satisfy this condition. So this, which basically means this condition is not there at all. So in other words, if you think about it, you are saying that I two should be greater than previous two, right? And what is I two? I two is simply array index minus I one. In other words, I two is simply array i minus i one. So this should be greater than equals to uh, greater than p two. Uh, if it is greater than p two, then you will simply like continue. So basically, this condition should be reversed if you want to have valid i ones here. So what are the valid i ones? If you just rearrange the entire thing, it would simply come as Valid i ones is simply array i minus p two. So everything which is greater than array i minus p two, all those i one are valid. So in other words, if you start instead of priv one, if you start from here, you can simply skip this condition. And if you can skip this condition, it simply is converted to some con some sort of L two R kind of solution. So If I just uh, try to visualize this, this is how it will look like. You can simply come up with some L, which is like array of index minus p two. Uh, there will be something here, which I leave that to you as an exercise. But uh, it would be either this or something else. And similarly, there would be some R as well, which uh, obviously, as we can see, it is array of index itself here. So. We have some L and some R, and if L is less than equals to R, you will sum all the DP of index plus plus uh, DP of index plus one from L to R, right? Now, given this state, removing this loop to compute this sum is very straightforward. You can simply use prefix sum and remove this loop. So, would encourage you to pause and try to think for a moment. So as we discussed, removing this entire thing is easy because you are doing a range sum over a particular index, and the value of this is not changing at all because DP of index plus one, like in this entire loop, you are only caring about index, like you are only changing index. Index plus one is always constant in this entire loop. So what you can do is. Before even entering this loop, somewhere here, you can compute the prefix sum over index plus one, right? Over index plus one, you can simply compute the prefix sum for all the indexes. And once you enter here, you can instead of going over this entire array, you can use this prefix sum to compute the sum in the range L to R, right? So this is how the pseudo code would change. instead of directly jumping to previous one you can simply compute a prefix sum here for dp of index plus 1 and inside this instead of going over the loop you can simply use prefix sum to get to result now here uh, there are some edge cases for example l minus 1 might not always exist similarly this might not always be true uh, it can be pre it can be something else it can start from something else as well so would encourage you to think about those minor edge cases and try to code this and get it submitted in lead code because if you are not able to get it submitted from this point onwards it means you have some uh, somewhere something is missing in your understanding so try to rewatch that section to clarify that pieces the only reason you should move forward from the video now on is to understand how to code this uh, better or if you are interested in looking at how i coded this uh, otherwise you should not look forward to understand okay let i didn't understand this entire thing but let me look at the code that should not be the motive from here onwards so next let's look at the code the code is uh, straightforward i'm just showing the code for this part because the previous parts are straightforward you can code them out by yourself Uh, what we are doing, we are simply iterating from i 
n minus 1 all the way up to 0. First, as we discussed, we will compute the prefix sum over dp of i plus 1. So in the, instead of maintaining this 2D array, I have now maintained one single 1D array. Why? Because at any given point of time, you will only be interested in dp of index plus 1. So there is no point in maintaining the entire 2D matrix. So you can save some space as well by simply maintaining 1D matrix here. So uh, I simply maintained a 1D matrix of dp and uh, this basically denotes dp of uh, i plus 1 in our entire explanation so far. After this, we simply go and figure out the prefix sum over dp of i plus 1. Once we have this, I will try out every possible priv value. For each of them, I will figure out two things, L and R. What is L? L would simply be either this or this, whatever is maximum. Basically, this particular value, this particular inequality says that if this is true, then for anything you put in the second array would satisfy the given inequality, right? But the value that you put here should also be greater than equals to P1, right? So to satisfy this inequality as well, you simply check whichever is max, you will start from there, right? And finally, you will end always at nums of i because you can't go above that. Now, if L is less than equals to R, you will simply take the prefix sum and put it in your dp of prev1. And finally, you replace your current dp with the new dp. And you return dp of 0 because that will contain your final answer. Why? I would encourage you to pause and try to think again for a moment. So the answer is, what is dp of 0? dp of 0 basically denotes, okay, tell me how many ways are there in which uh, like let's say that this is the entire array, right? DP, this is 0, 1, 2, all the way, right? DP of 0 basically says, tell me the number of ways in which I can fill everything afterwards, given that the previous element is 0. And if you remember the very start of the discussion, we started with that particular assumption only. So basically DP of 0 will give us the final result. So we simply return dp of 0 here. So hope this entire solution is clear. If you have any doubts, any of the piece, feel free to post them in the comment section below. I would be happy to answer. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up and do subscribe if you haven't already. I will see you in the next one. Thank you.